the Anycubic Photo Mono 2. Let's give it a review. Biff, pow, zap, clunk, clunk, ouchie. Hey guys, you may recall me speaking very highly of the Anycubic Mono 4K. It's certainly a printer I've never been shy to recommend, particularly to beginners, as its great performance and low price are an irresistible combination. And these features have led to it being one of the best-selling printers on Amazon in 2022. Well, Anycubic has tweaked its design and has now given us the Mono 2. But is it any better? The biggest surprise is the blue lid. And don't be fooled by this. Up until now, Anycubic has reserved this colour for its DLP printers. But no longer. It seems we'll be seeing more blue lids Anycubic inform me. Which is a pity as I enjoyed the cheerful yellow and the blue used to get me excited for DLPs. But no, this is a good old LCD printer. With a blue lid which I'm sorry to say I don't much care for. There's a different feel here. A flimsier grade of plastic. Or so it seems to me. However, as a unit it's quite attractive with modest dimensions that allow it to fit in just about any home. The power point and switch are located at the rear, and the USB port is found on the right hand side. At the front is the small but clear colour menu touchscreen, containing any cubic standard, easy to follow user interface. The Mono 4K had a single linear rail, and so does the Mono 2. It's sufficiently robust to enable quality prints, as you'll see in a moment, and the Xeon travels smoothly, as you'd expect. Unlike the Mono 4K, the build plate has the laser-etched checkerboard pattern that we're now used to seeing with any cubic. And this certainly helps with plate addition. The plate is also larger, and this supports an increased build volume of 20%. The plate attaches to the Z-arm with a single knob. But when you take it straight from the box, you may have a bit of a problem. Don't panic, just use the provided tool to slacken the four bolts. This will allow the build plate to move freely. And now it will fit. Now this won't happen again once the plate has been properly leveled. But we'll come to that in a moment. I'm pleased to say that the resin tray is metal, another big bonus for me over the 4K. Don't get me wrong, 99% of the time plastic trays work fine, but personally I've had issues with them, so I'm delighted that metal is the norm for the Mono 2. There's also little feet on this tray, which means that you can put it down without scratching the FEP. These feet, of course, make locating the tray position a simple affair, and the tray is locked down by use of removable bolts. Level markings are always a welcome sight, and these are embossed, meaning they won't wash away. Beneath the resin tray is the heart of any resin printer, the exposure screen. This measures 6.6 .6 inches, an improvement over the Mono 4K's 6.2 inches, helping achieve the larger print volume and giving us 4098 by 2560 pixels, which is why Anycubic are calling this a 4K Plus screen. Realistically, it produces 35 microns of XY resolution. And if you don't know what that means or understand why it's important, then check out my beginner's guide tutorial, which should hopefully make this nice, clear and simple for you. Now the Mono 4K was also 35 microns, but Anycubic has made improvements to the UV light source. The previous parallel matrix has been replaced by Anycubic's enhanced light turbo. Apparently Anycubic felt that the Mono 4K suffered from layer and grid lines, 
an issue I personally didn't experience. But hey, I'm glad to see that they're taking notice and making upgrades. Before we can print, we need to level the build plate, and this is achieved with the standard paper method. Now again, if you're not familiar with this, please check out my beginner's guide, where I take you right from unboxing to plate leveling and more things besides. For resin, I opted to use Anycubic Craftsman Grey, which is my personal favourite from the Anycubic range and produces some excellent results. You'll need to inform your preferred slicer about your resin choice and the USB stick that comes with this printer contains Anycubic's own Photon Workshop slicer. This is an upgraded version to match the launch of the Mono 2 and I found it pleasantly easy and quick to use. I've no doubt that your 2 box and lychee will soon be supporting the Mono 2 if you prefer other slicers, but this is a worthy choice for the beginner. And here are the settings that I used for this particular resin. Starting with the Amenolabs Town test print, the Mono 2 did not disappoint. All of the details that I would expect to see are clearly there. Next, I printed the open source ring, and again, plenty of details and no problems here. Testing the anti-aliasing feature at halfway, I printed Mini Vogman. Looking for something a little more detailed and demanding, I turned to DMG Minis and found a couple of great pre-supported models. Now, I love these little guys, and I've been astounded by the talent of their creator, Chad. Like so many things in life, these aren't free. But if you head over to Chad's Gumroad store, he's offering 20% off for the next 30 days. So don't hang around if you're interested. Sure enough, the Mono 2 did a great job of printing these miniatures, and the detail absolutely pops. So what do I think of the Anycubic Photon Mono 2? Well, I loved the Mono 4K, and when I saw the slightly flimsy lid on the Mono 2, I thought it was going to be a replacement that I wouldn't like. The power switch moving from the side to the more inconvenient back didn't help much either. And yes, I am going on the attack here and saying, according to my free user comparison, which I will admit needs much, much more data to be truly accurate, only 86% of Anycubic's customers would recommend them. What's more, I've now made it possible for you to see what these genuine, real users are saying about both their successes and their problems. But, in absolute fairness to Anycubic, when I made them aware of my findings, they listened and tell me that they are making plans to improve matters. As this is a very competitive market, I get the feeling Anycubic are going to want to gain background. So time will tell on that one. And remember, if you have any 3D resin printer, whatever the brand, please share your experiences. This is purely a free source of information for the printing community to share. Getting back to the Mono 2 now, let's be really, really nasty. Companies only bring out these new models to make money, right? Well, actually, Anycubic has surprised me here. Right now, as I'm making this video, the Mono 2 is not yet on sale, so I can't be certain of anything. But Anycubic tell me that they are keen for the Mono 2 to attract newbies to resin printing. And for that reason, their goal is to keep the cost of this machine nice and low, somewhere between 200 and 230 US dollars. Time will tell, but that certainly is an attractive starter price. But do check out the description as I'll be posting price links as soon as they're available. So, given the print volume and light source enhancements, and more specifically the proven print quality of this printer, I'd have to say that this is a worthy successor to the Mono 4K. 
If things go the way that Anycubic suggest, with this keen price and with an eye towards improving customer service, then yes, I'd certainly encourage any newbie to the hobby or anyone searching at this end of the market to strongly consider the Photon Mono 2. It will not disappoint. And that's about it for this review. As always, feel free to drop me any comments or questions and I'll do my best to help. So take care guys and thanks for watching.